What's the area of a trapezoid? If you Google it, you'll find this formula, which is great, but unfortunately a lot of people simply memorize this without ever understanding where it actually comes from, which is exactly what I did in school, and it caused a lot of problems for me. So today, we're going to go through two approaches using triangles to understand where this formula comes from. Let's say we have this trapezoid with these lengths. So the top base is 2, the bottom base is 10, and the height is 5. Now let's say we don't know the trapezoid area formula. How would we find the area? Well, one really useful strategy is to try to chop up a problem into smaller, simpler problems that we do know how to solve. One simpler shape that we can calculate the area of is triangles. So is there a way that we can add lines, draw more lines on this trapezoid to represent it as one or more triangles? Go ahead and, and pause the video. Do, do pause this. Take a few moments to really think about it. One way that we can split this trapezoid into two triangles is by drawing a line from this top left corner to the bottom right corner. As a side note, if you draw the opposite line from the bottom left to the top right, that also works. Now we have two triangles. We already know the formula for the area of a triangle, 1 half base times height. So let's start with this larger triangle first. So 1 half times base, what's our base here? Well 10, that's the longer base from the trapezoid times height, which is this value, 5. So that's the area of one triangle. Now for the other triangle, it's 1 half times base, which for the smaller triangle is the shorter trapezoid base, 2, times the height, which is still that same value, 5. An important thing to notice here is both the smaller and the larger triangles, as well as the trapezoid, they all have this same height, which is in this case, 5. Now we have the areas of the two triangles that make up our trapezoid. But before we simplify this expression, notice that we have some common factors here. So specifically, 1 half and 5. So let's factor those out, and we'll rewrite this expression in factored form. If we generalize this logic we just went through, so instead of the numbers 2, 10, and 5, let's use variables to represent those values. So we'll say a for our shorter base length, b for our longer base length, and h for our height. Now let's rearrange the order of multiplication a bit here, and remember that that doesn't change the value, and we're done. Well, sort of. That's one way you can get to the formula you'll find online, which is pretty cool, but I want to go through a different approach to get to the same place. Different perspective and all that, you know? Let's go back to our original example. If we draw in a line like this from the top left corner to the midpoint of the opposite leg, what does that do for us? Well, one thing is that since we declared that the line intersects the midpoint of the opposite leg, that means that these pieces here have the same length. We'll call that length d. Another thing to remember about trapezoids is that by definition, the bases are parallel. So for a moment, let's only focus in on this one section of the trapezoid. Now, whenever we have this structure, this two parallel lines and then they're intersected by another line, and that line's called a transversal, remember that there are pretty useful relationships between the angles involved here. Now, the one we're interested in right now is consecutive interior angles being supplementary. So if we label these x and y, that'd be x plus y is 180. Now, why did we go through all that? If we go back to our trapezoid and we cut the triangle we made like so, such that it can rotate around the midpoint of that leg, and it rotates all the way around until the two half legs of length d, until they're on top of each other exactly. Remember the consecutive interior angles from before? Well, after the rotation, we now have angle x directly next to angle y, and angles x and y are supplementary, which means that this new length is a straight line. And what is that straight line made up of? Well, it's the sum of the shorter and longer bases from our original trapezoid. Notice what shape we've created here. We've created a triangle. So the area is, again, 1 half times our base, which is a plus b, the sum of the bases of the original trapezoid, times h, the height of our original trapezoid. And look at that. We've gotten to the same formula using two different approaches. I really hope this was helpful. 
I know learning and, well, relearning this was super helpful for me. Comment below with other topics you want me to cover. Make sure to like, subscribe, also share it with a friend who's maybe struggling with the same concept. Have a great day. I will see you next time. Bye.